by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine, by the grace of Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله my dear viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to our morning show, our morning program. This goes by the name of Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillahi Azza wa Jal, Rise and Shine is all about remaining happy, remaining positive, my dear viewers of Madani channel, bettering our lives, bettering our livelihoods, bettering our characteristics, bettering our mannerism, and also to remove anything negative from our minds, anything which may be being a cause of us feeling down, feeling anxious, to place all of these things to a side, to know that whatever goodness we have, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted it to us. If there are any difficulties in our lives, then it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has bestowed those upon us, who has inflicted us with those. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, my dear viewers of Madani channel, with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wished for us, we must be, we should be, inshallah azza wa jal, we are satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Every single moment, every single day, we must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must say, alhamdulillah, all praise, all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, you know, as we begin by listening to the tilawat of the Quran, I do remember that when the Quran is being recited, then you should place all the things you are doing at the moment on a whole, pause for a moment, you know, play, put the things to a side, put them down, and give your full attention to the beautiful verses of the Holy Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر For those that may have just joined you are watching Rise and Shine. Now, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa Jal. On Friday, it is especially today, my dear viewers, a separate note, a side note, 
especially my dear viewers of Madani channel, for those individuals who will be going to perform the Jum'ah prayer, please do when you go perform the Jum'ah prayer, as we've heard, you know, a few weeks ago, that when you do go perform the Jum'ah, try to go perform the Jum'ah early, as those people who perform it early and they go early, then their names are not only recorded, but they are granted reward, my dear viewers. Angels write their names on the records. And when you enter the masjid, do not sit at the back, but make your way towards the front. Undoubtedly, there is more reward in the first rows, my dear viewers of Madani Channel. And also, for those, well, for everybody, remember that today is Friday. Today is a blessed day. If you are to perform one act on this Friday, you shall gain the reward of 70. If you are to perform or to recite the Rushri for once, you shall gain the reward of 70 the Rushri. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers, one form, one type of the Rushri is reciting the Naad of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's listen to the Naad Sharif. Now today, yes, we do have a very, very important topic. A brilliant topic, my dear viewers of the channel, because today we shall be speaking about an individual. Who is this individual? This is none other than Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who he is, we'll find out more. First, let's listen to the Naad Sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu موسیقی زہے عزتو اعتلاعِ محمد کہ ہے عرش حق زیر پائے محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مکہ عرش ان کا فلک پر خدا کی رضا دا 
دم نزع جاری نزع جاری ہو میری سبا پر محمد 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 خدا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اجابت نے جھک کر گلے سے لگایا اجابت نے جھک کر گلے سے لگایا بڑھی ناز سے جب دعائے محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رضا پل سے اب وجد کرتے گزریے رضا پل سے اب وجد کرتے گزریے کہ ہے رب سل صدا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم اے ویوز و مندر انشاءاللہ الحمدللہ عز و لیلی آر واشنگ رائز ان شائن and yes we have listened to the tilawat of the quran we have listened to the nashrif of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we yes a reminder that today is friday make the most now remember your deeds are multiplied by 70 but so are your sins so refrain from committing sins refrain from performing any sins my dear viewers of the channel because sins will also be multiplied by 70. now today we have a beautiful topic today we shall be speaking about Hz. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal al-Shaybani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. My dear viewers of Madani channel, there are four Imams of the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The first Imam are known as Imam Azam. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whose name Hz. Nu'man bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This was the you know, who we know as Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. Abu Hanifa is known as famously my day viewers. Even from amongst the four Imams, he is the greatest and he has millions of followers all around the world. All four of these do. We identify, many of us will identify ourselves as Hanfi. This means we are followers of the Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. Another Imam is Imam Shafi'i radiallahu ta'ala an Imam Hazrat Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i radiallahu ta'ala anhu another great Imam of the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah also millions of people following him all over the world another Imam is Hazrat Imam Malik ibn Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu the great Hazrat Imam Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu Millions of people identifying themselves as Malikis, 
It means they follow the school of thought of Hazrat Imam Malik bin Anas radiallahu ta'ala an. These are three, but then there's another individual. Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And many people all around the world, they identify themselves as Hanbalis meaning they follow the school of Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Each and every single four great mujtahidun, great scholars, great imams, my viewers, every single one of them we respect and honor. Every single one of them are correct, my viewers. There are four rivers leading to the same sea. Four different pathways, my viewers of Mantani Channel. We respect and love them all and today we shall be speaking about one of these and this is none other than Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu my dear viewers of Madani channel Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal firstly we've heard their name so much such a great personality may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love for them Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu is such a person who has written the Musnad, which is, you know, he's written a Musnad, which is known as the Musnad of Imam, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal an. And this Musnad is such as the Ahadith, he has compiled the Ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah today, in our daily Hadith Sharif, we shall learn one Hadith Sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But just a side point, my dear viewers, this, within this Musnad, there are 40,000 approximately, 40,000 ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which have been mentioned. This is how much he has written down, my dear viewers. But in terms of how much he himself has retained, how much he himself has memorized, the scholars state that Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he has memorized one million approximately approximately one million ahadith sharif of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam just imagine this imagine this my dear viewers one million and from this there's a very very important lesson there's a very very important lesson for us in regards to or pertaining to the ahadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what is this lesson my dear viewers this lesson is Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam had approximately 124,000 prophets. The prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wasallam, the companions would always try to spend as much time in the blessed court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet ﷺ would be talking to his companions regularly, teaching the companions, teaching them what is right, what is wrong. You know, some companions would spend the entire day listening to Rasulullah. ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ would spend his time teaching the companions. In different situations, the Prophet ﷺ would tell different companions different things. And all of these what the Prophet ﷺ was saying, what the Prophet ﷺ had said, these beautiful words, the companions, they had memorized these and they had passed these on. Now, we have the Qur'an al kareem which is the greatest book undoubtedly, my dear viewers of Madani channel, undoubtedly, there's no doubt about it. And the Qur'an al kareem has come to us through mass transmission, meaning so many people, they have taught it to another person. They've taught it to the second person. They've taught it to their children, their children, their children. It continues on and on, their students, etc. This is how everything has reached us. So the Qur'an has reached us in this manner. And many ahadith sharif of Rasulullah have reached us also through transmission. Now, my dear viewers, Remember, there is not a slight, a minimum, a minor change, discrepancy within the Qur'an. Nothing at all. Nothing has been added. Nothing has been removed. Nothing has been interpolated. Nothing has been edited. Nothing whatsoever. This is the Qur'an al-Kareem. 
after the Quran al Karim, we have the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These have also been passed down. But the Quran was something which everybody was, you know, people were recommended to memorize the Quran. So many companions would memorize the Quran. Now the Ahadith Sharif were also passed on, my dear viewers. After the Al Quran Al Karim, we have a book known as Sahih Al Bukhari, you know, a book known as Sahih Muslim. These are very, very authentic books of the Ahadith Sharif of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there's something we must understand. You know, we have the rest of the Sahih Sita, etc. Some people say they only accept the Quran. Some people say they'll only accept the Sahih Al Bukhari, the Sahih Al Muslim. But dear viewers, there are also other books of Ahadith Sharif which we should consider critically but if they have strong chains if they have good chains, Hassan chains even those with weak chains there is a reason my dear viewers they have been passed on and the lesson which I was speaking about which I was referring to was that just because it's not in Sahih al-Bukhari, just because it's not in Sahih al-Muslim. It doesn't mean it's not a hadith, it doesn't mean it's a weak hadith sharif. My dear viewers, Hazrat Imam Bukhari anhu, within Sahih al-Bukhari, there's 7,000 or so, but if you remove the repeated ones, there's approximately 4,000 hadith sharif. Imam Bukhari anhu, had memorized 300,000. Imam Bukhari anhu, came after Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But my dear viewers, remember that if Imam Bukhari had memorized 300,000 approximately, it's mentioned 300,000 Ahadith Sharif, what about the rest of the Ahadith Sharif? A million which is Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal had memorized. And undoubtedly other great Tabi'un, other great companions had memorized so many Ahadith Sharif. What's happened with those? They have also been passed on. So whenever it is any hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we should respect and honor every single hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Subhanallah, coming back to the life of Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was such a person, my dear viewers, that people would know he is the imam of the time. It's mentioned once the son of Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal anhu, his son name was Hazrat Salih radhiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Salih radhiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells his own son. He tells Hazrat Zuhair ibn Salih radhiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that my father once told me, meaning referring to Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radhiallahu anhu, you know, somebody once knocks on his door. And Hazrat Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, he opens the door. And this person, if you were to see his state, his clothes are such that they have, you know, his clothes, my dear views of Madhuri Shalom, they are ripped. He's, you know, he looks like a traveler. He has dust on his clothes. His face is in such a state. He's, it's as if, you know, it says he's tanned or he's got sunburn, my dear viewers, because it's the scorching heat. And I remember a little about Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. He was born in Baghdad, Sharif. So inshallah we shall come back to this also. Undoubtedly it was very hot my dear viewers. You know you didn't have AC traveling in cars or anything along these lines. No. They were walking, they were traveling by such means. And this person when Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal who he opens the door. He gives him salam, he sees his state. So you know he gives him salam, he welcomes him in. And he asks him, where are you from? He says, I've come from such far lands. And he asks him, what brings you here? He says, just to see you. Allahu Akbar, he's thinking just to see me. And he says, look, I do apologize, but I don't have much with me. I only have four rotis. I only have four pieces of bread. And that person says, I just seeing you has quenched my thirst. Do not worry. I do not need any dirhams, any dinars. I do not require any money. And he says, okay, just take these four pieces of bread. So out of respect for Baraka, 
He takes his four pieces of bread and then he leaves. He kisses as Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal he kisses his hands out of respect and then he leaves. And wow. My dear viewers, he came, he embarked such a long, tiresome, difficult, burdensome journey. For what? Just to spend a few moments in the presence, just to see Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Undoubtedly, Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a great individual who even the people at that time would recognize. His name, Adi viewers of Madhuri Channel, or his kunniya, which is his patronym. This is Abu Abdullah. This is Abu Abdullah because he famously, he had, he had many children, but one of his children, one of his sons was Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a very, very pious and a great scholar, my dear viewers. He's also famous, possibly not as much as his father, but generally very, very famous as the Abdullah ibn Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala an. A great scholar, my dear viewers of the channel. So, Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was known as Abu Abdullah, the father of Abdullah. His name, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, as we've mentioned. He was born in the month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, the same month of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madhani Channel, you are watching Rise and Shine each and every single day. We have a daily reminder. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to our daily reminder. Alhamdulillah Azawajal, a very beautiful story to begin with. Uh, once a person, he went to visit one of his person that he knew, his, uh, his friend. And as he was going on the way to visiting his friend, he met up with another person. And this person asked him, who are you going to go and visit? And he mentioned his name and he goes, do you know that person? And the person replied that I don't really know him much, no. And he says, what is your intention? Why are you going to go and meet him? And he says, because he's a, he's a Muslim and I wish to go and see him and I wish to go and make dua for him because I am a well-wisher for that person. So he says that congratulations be on you because Allah Azza wa Jal has sent me to give you the good news that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared the gardens of paradise for you. This is the mafhum of this story that is mentioned by the scholars. You know, going and visiting sick people. There are so many people in hospitals, in homes that we know of. And there are so many sick people in hospitals and homes that we don't know of. But they are Muslims. And it is one of their rights that we go and we visit these people. Majority of the time, we we'll only go and visit our own family and friends that we know. But when the Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, I can guarantee you there are so many people out there in hospitals, in homes that are struggling. Maybe some of them don't even have anyone to come and visit them. We visited uh, a hospital once and the person there, he told us shockingly that it's been two years that he's been really ill in this hospital, but no one has ever come to see him, not even his family members. So don't always assume and think that all these people that are ill in hospitals and homes, they've got wide, you know, huge families that can come and see them. No, as Muslims, we need to go and see these people. We need to take gifts for them. We need to make dua for them. And this is the time, the time of need. A good Muslim is he who will go and visit these people. And sadly, most of the time, these people don't, may, maybe they don't have anyone to come and see them. So my dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, the reminder for today is there are many people who are ill. Go and see them. Go and ask about them. Go and see how you can help them. And the best Muslim is the one that helps for others. And as they say, you've lived for yourself. Try living for others as well. Try to think about these people. Try to put happiness into their hearts and their mind as well. There are so many people who are at this moment of time, 
there might be someone in hospital now waiting, looking towards that door that their Muslim brothers will come and see them. And sadly, just imagine if days and days pass by, no one comes in to see them. You know, and these people, sadly, their, their, their conditions may be deteriorating every single day just because of this thought. Alhamdulillah, I make the intention. Let's all make this intention that inshallah from today we will go and we will visit these sick people. Take a gift for them, take you know some fruits for them and make dua for them. When you go, make dua for them. Now you might be thinking, I don't even know this person. I don't even know how he's going to feel me coming here. But my dear Islam brothers, at least go. This is, you know, instead of asking questions, you know, don't be reluctant, go there. Have someone to help you. Maybe inshallah azawajal, by you going there, it could improve the condition of that person. And a good Muslim is he, whatever he thinks good about himself, he will think good of other people as well. And this is what the beauty of Islam is. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go and visit sick people. He used to go and make dua for them. Do it for the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And suddenly this sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is slowly dying away because why? I don't have time. I'm too busy at work. I don't get enough time. I come back from work. I'm tired. Sadly, we've come to a stage where our own parents, you know, we go and visit them once a week and they only live down the road. Why? Because I'm busy. That is not a good thing to do. You know, our own brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, our blood relations, yeah, they're sick, they're ill, but we don't have time to go and see them. Inshallah, that needs to change. And we need to change it now. If we go and visit these people, you don't know how much happiness you may put into his heart. And maybe, inshallah, azawajal, if we are ill, we'll have someone to come to us as well. Or remember what the English saying is, that what goes round, comes round. If you take, can't take time out to go and visit someone today, is someone going to come and visit you when you are ill? And you'll be sat on your bed thinking, I wish someone can come and make dua for me. I wish someone can come and see me. But why would someone come? I never used to go to anyone. So inshallah, azawajal, this, take this reminder. I'm going to take it seriously. Let's all take it seriously and change the lives of many people. Your smile could change the life of many people. You visiting them could change many people as well, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala reward us and may Allah give us all the ability to act upon this as well. Ameen. بجاه النبي الأمين صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد. صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, الحمد لله عز وجل. You are watching Rise and Shine. We have just had our daily reminder and we're speaking about Hazrat Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu the Ahmed ibn Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was born in the year 164 AH 164 after Hijri and this is very very important because he was born after the time of Hazrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu was born in 70 or 80 years AH and his demise took place in 150, 150 years after Hijri. Hazrat Imam Malik who was during the time of Hazrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa and Hazrat Imam Shafi'i who was the student, student of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa. He was the son-in-law and student of Hazrat Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani Hazrat Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani was one of the famous students of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa So Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hanbar he came later even after the demise of Hazrat Imam Azam Abu Hanifa but he was doing the same time as Hazrat Imam Shafi'i Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hanbar was pure Arab he was pure Arab. His father has passed away in his childhood and he was brought up by his mother. Really the respect and honor he possessed for his mother. He traveled far and wide for knowledge. And a lesson my dear viewers to take from this is that those people whose names we remember, 
those people whose names we remember, my dear viewers, there are such individuals who they strive, they, you know, their endeavor, my dear viewers, they were motivated, ambitious, and they put the effort into it. They worked really, really hard to seek knowledge, to become successful, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept their names alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them such that subhanallah, not each and every single year, you know, people remember them daily. People who study, for example, those people who will be studying, you know, every single day they come across Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, this is his opinion. This was the opinion of Imam Shafi'i. This was the opinion of Imam Malik. This was the opinion of the Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And they praise each and every single one of them. This is what he had attained. But the countries he traveled to, he traveled to Gufa, Basra, these were within Baghdad itself. But then Yemen, Syria, Makkah Sharif, Medina Sharif, and this wasn't nowadays by, you know, you can just get a plane and you can travel there. No. This was in them days when you would have to walk for months. And what would they go for? Sometimes just a hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is all they would go for. And they would travel for so long just for a hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Alhamdulillah, Azrul on rise and shine each and every single day just by sitting within the comfort of your own homes. Whilst eating your own breakfast, you may be watching Rise and Shine. And we have for you one hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But my viewers, don't take it lightly. Don't think this is just another hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Think about it. Ponder over the words of the hadith sharif over the explanation of the Hadith Sharif. And if there's a lesson behind it, undoubtedly there is. Then we should make the most. We should try to act upon this Hadith Sharif. People would travel for months, being hungry, being thirsty. The extreme heat of the sun, my dear viewers. They would suffer all of these hardships. Traveling so much, my dear viewers, to attain a Hadith Sharif. Yes, you are being given a hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Please do not take it lightly. Every single hadith sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you should think, wow, people have gone through such sacrifices. People have gone through such hardships to preserve the teachings and the sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wow, you know, let's hear this hadith sharif. Let's try to act upon it. Subhanallah, I don't even have to leave my room. It's being, you know, given to me through the TV. They are teaching us. Madhili Channel is teaching us the Hadith Sharif. My dear viewers, let's listen to a Hadith Sharif of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam dear viewers of rise and shine no doubt calling towards righteousness is a tremendous form of worship and a means to attain countless good deeds inshallah ta'ala in today's daily hadith we will hear about such an individual whose reward is unimaginable. Sayyidina Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu has reported that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam say that the Mu'adhinun will have the longest necks on the Day of Judgment. Meaning the Mu'adhinun are those people who call out the Adhan, who call, who invite the people for the Salah. Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dailwi alayhi rahmah states, that the long necks here has been used as a metaphor, has figuratively been used to illustrate the fact that the Mu'adhinun will have a superior rank and a status on the Day of Judgment. In light of another hadith, it is mentioned that whoever gives adhan for seven years, freedom of hell is recorded for him. And replying to the adhan also has countless blessings and a great blessing to 
those who hear the adhan being called out and reply to it, they can assure themselves with the intercession of the Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take heed that when the Mu'azzin says, Hayya ala salah, we leave all our tasks and we head towards the masjid to perform our salah with jama'ah. Amin bijahi nabil amin sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam a bit about us imam ahmed bin hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu many viewers he went out in search of knowledge he suffered much hardship for the sake of the deen, for the sake of the religion. He would get up very, very early. Even that his mother would say, at least wait for it to you know, become a bit light or maybe even the azan for Fajr Salah and then leave. Why are you going so quickly? This would be his love to go out in search of knowledge. And he said as with Imam Ahmed bin Muhammad who other students, they would have to write everything. And no, there's no harm in writing things, my dear viewers. But he was blessed with such a memory that other people, they would be shocked that they have to write anything. And if they were in doubt, they would ask the Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, radiallahu ta'ala, and whatever he would say, this is what they would go by. This is how great he was. Whenever his teacher, he spent 20 years in the presence of his teacher, and every single thing his teacher had mentioned, Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hamad radiallahu ta'ala who had memorized it and he would be able to relay it. This is how great he was. And he said, Hazrat Sa'id bin Ahmad radiallahu ta'ala he, he asked Hazrat Imam Abu Zur'a radiallahu ta'ala that who has Hazrat Imam Zur'a himself radiallahu ta'ala who is a great muhaddis, who has a greater memory? You Hazrat Imam Ahmed bin Hamad. And Hazrat Abu Zur'a radiallahu ta'ala who replies Imam Ahmed bin Hamad. He says, how do you know if you have a better memory? He says, because I have seen his books and the Ahadith Sharif which he writes are mentioned and which are mentioned at the start of his books. They have no mention of the narrators. And the reason for this is that because whichever portion of Hadith Sharif he would hear, he would remember it immediately. And this itself is beyond me. Subhanallah, this is what he states. My dear viewers of Madhuri's channel, sadly, that's all for now. But inshallah, you make the most of this Friday, make the most of your day. Remember, deeds are multiplied by 70. Recite the Ru Sharif upon Rasulullah in abundance and continue to watch Madhuri's channel each and every single day. Now, tomorrow is Saturday, and on Saturdays, Alhamdulillah, there is the Madhuri Muzakara where Amir Ahli Sunnah, Dhamad Barakatum Ali, the founder of Dawud Islami, a great personality, they shall be teaching us about our deen, they shall be giving us pearls of wisdom, they shall be, you know, really, there are so many questions you will have in your mind, when you watch Madinu Mazakra, you will think, wow, you know, I've been thinking about this for so many years, I just never had the chance, and subhanAllah, I've learned it. But if it was really, you would be, overwhelmed with the information Alhamdulillah you learn and receive from the Madin Mazakra please try to watch that tomorrow night Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam By the grace of Allah By the grace of Allah Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine By the grace of Allah